you and Lisa, Lisa and Brianna for your words. Good morning, everyone. My name is Hazel Quack. I am the Regional Director for Asia Pacific at GFN. And we woke up really early this morning to visit the market. It was really fascinating. Um, but that brings us to today, the last official day. And I hope you've enjoyed the week a lot uh, and managed to catch up with everyone you wanted to meet on this very symbolic uh, event of GFN. So today's focus is on looking ahead, and as we wrap up the last day, we will look for the future, look to the future. So all of you are such innovators at what you do, and the world is evolving. We've seen the amazing ways that you have also evolved and found new solutions. Um, today's sessions will provide ideas that you can carry forward beyond the conference, and we hope you will continue to, of course, engage beyond the conference as well. This morning, we will hear a few more featured speakers and discussions, followed by our award ceremony, which I know many of you have uh, been really excited about, and have our closing session. That will be followed by our evening of uh, closing celebration at the zoo, for those of you who have been cooped up at the hotel a bit too much. <laughs> but following the morning visit to the market, um, that it was incredible, it was massive. I'm from Singapore, so seeing something of this scale at 2 million tons a year is incredible. And the quality of produce and the, seeing the collaborate, level of collaboration as support, the farmers, growers, um, everyone has for Food Bank Australia and seeing how they recognize the work and impact that this has cre uh, go going down to is really amazing. Seeing the purple signs at the different stalls was a mark of support. It was really wonderful to see. But that brings us to the topic of agricultural recovery, and I'm really happy to introduce my colleague, um, one of our newer colleagues in GFN, but she's getting very popular because of the work that she does. Fanny Omondi, our agricultural hub Recovery Director, Agricultural Recovery Hub Director, will come to stage to introduce this session and lead this discussion. Welcome, Fanny. Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Fanny Omondi. I'm the Agricultural Recovery Hub Director at the Global Food Banking Network. It is such an honor to have you this morning to explore this fast growing and evolving area of agricultural recovery. And that is increasing, increasingly becoming critical and important to food banking efforts uh, across the globe. Agricultural recovery is, like I said, is fast, one of the fastest growing areas uh, of food banking, encompassing food recovery from markets, from farms, from pack houses. And this form of recovery provi provides um, a valuable source of varied, fresh, and highly nutritious food, which is critical to addressing the mission of um, uh, addressing food insecurity and malnutrition in the communities that we serve. The rapid evolution of agricultural recovery presents an exciting opportunity for innovation, uh, including value addition uh, for fresh, fresh uh, produce. GFN's Agricultural Recovery Hub is a global resource and asset that is meant to serve all the food banks in our network and was really created to enhance food banks' capacity to recover this fresh, nutritious produce from farms, uh, whether it's commercial farms, smallholder farms, from pack houses and even markets. And the hub seeks to do this by fostering knowledge sharing, uh, targeted technical assistance, which then helps the, farmer, the, the food banks to accelerate uh, their learning curve, especially for new programs and scale proven agricultural recovery models. The hub provides critical guidance for launching agricultural recovery initiatives while supporting established programs um, in expanding their reach and optimizing processes. It is then a valuable resource that offers guidance on starting, scaling, and troubleshooting various 
aspects of agricultural recovery. In this way, the hub then promotes innovation and growth, um, helping food banks improve agricultural recovery efforts, really. And by doing so, food banks can better serve food in secure communities, uh, reduce food loss and waste at, cre at, at very key points on the crop value chains. Like I alluded to earlier, there is great diversity of models in the network, and so really there isn't a one-size-fits-all for all the agricultural recovery models and programs in the network. Within the GFN network, we have seen how diverse models um, have how, how diverse models of agricultural recovery enable food banks to experiment with and adapt approaches best suited for their local context. For example, we have food banks in Colombia and the food bank in, in, in Israel, like at Israel, that have built multifaceted agricultural recovery uh, programs tailored to suit their unique environments. These examples demonstrate the importance of flexibility, innovation, and creativity in expanding food sourcing efforts. We have an amazing plenary lined up for you this morning. Really excited to moderate that. So today's plenary will take us through the case studies of agricultural recovery programs at various stages of development. For food banks with advanced programs, we'll explore different successful models and reflect on key lessons in building these programs, providing a valuable roadmap uh, for newer food banks that are seeking to design and implement uh, agricultural recovery initiatives. For food banks with the recently started agricultural recovery models, we'll hear first and about uh, the, the motivation to start agricultural recovery, some of the lessons they've learned, and some of the emerging opportunities that they have identified. These insights will then give us, give us a glimpse into what's possible in agricultural recovery, of, even as agricultural recovery continues to grow in many areas across the world offering food banks the chance to refine the models and amplify their impact in this sense. So as we gather to discuss these exciting developments in agricultural recovery, I'm really pleased to be, uh, to be introducing two very distinguished individuals with extensive global experience in agriculture, in food systems, and in policy. Their insights will help us set the context for this important conversation, ensuring that we maximize the opportunities in agricultural recovery for the benefit of food insecure communities worldwide. And now, it is my greatest honor to introduce to you Dr. Schengen Fan. Dr. Fan is the chair professor Dr. Fan is a chair professor in the College of Economics and Management at China Agricultural University and board director of GFN. Dr. Fan is a widely known expert on this topic and also provides valuable insights as a board director at GFN. Please help me welcome Dr. Fan. And now I'd like to introduce um, our second very distinguished, world-renowned uh, leader, uh, Fiona Simpson. Fiona is the chair and commissioner at ACIR, World Farmers Organization president and board director of Food Bank Australia. She has a history uh, as a farmer and has taken a leadership role in advocating for agriculture in many positions including as a board director of Food Bank Australia. Help me welcome Fiona. Great, so before we go into the second phase of the conversation where we'll have um, three of our food bankers come up here to share their experiences, I'd like to briefly start with both Dr. Fan and Fiona sharing 
uh, from their own vast experience in this area of agriculture, food systems, and policy. So please um, welcome Dr. Fan. Lady first. You go first. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're number one. Yeah, I, I got to warm up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So thank you, Fanny. So actually, uh, I was a farmer too uh, in southeast China. So we uh, grow rice, we raise fish. So that's that's why my village is called a rice and fish village. And uh, so through that, and I grew up, I went to the agriculture college, and I went to US to study, and I got to the chance to work with ACIR, one of the best institutions here in Australia on global food <laughs> policy issues. So thank you for the support. ACIR used to be a donor to my institute called the International Food Policy Research Institute. So where we conduct policy research to support countries in Africa, in Asia, in Latin America, or even globally, to use policy as instruments to solve hunger malnutrition issues globally. So now, I think agriculture recovery is so important because it is a part of the food systems. The food systems includes every component of the food production, transportation, retailing, wholesaling, even to our consumption. So the production side, which we usually, we usually call, call loss, we, we lose quite a bit of food, particularly in some of the developing countries where the infrastructure is relatively poor. We lose quite a bit of food. So I think for rich countries like Australia, it's more waste. For countries like in Africa, even in China, it's more loss. Now the question is how can we really recover some of the loss? So for example, because of the poor infrastructure, poor marketing system, the food we produce sometimes never reach to the market, never reach to the consumers. So what can we do? Well, obviously improving infrastructure, improving marketing, improving pricing system will be a long-term solution. But in the short run, how can we really bring nutritious, healthy foods to consumers? I think food banks here can play a very big role. I have seen in India, I don't know how many of us are coming from India. <coughs> India, even village food banks, plays a very big role. They bring foods from producers, farmers, to the consumers. And, uh, and uh, more, I think more important here is about the nutrition. Because at a farm level, what we waste usually is fruits, vegetables, dairy products, eggs, and to some extent, meat. These are usually more nutritious than rice, wheat, and maize. And the rice, wheat, and maize usually are not easy to be rotten or to be, to be wasted or to be lost. So here, I think food banks can help to recover some of the more nutritious, healthy foods, like fruits, vegetables, dairy products, eggs, and, and beyond. So now, what do we do? One is, okay, you know, if we have food banks go out to look for all this sort of to be lost foods. The other to use a modern technology, you know, to use cell phone, to use internet, to really listen to producers where the, the potential loss could be. And with that information, the food banks or maybe even other organizations can come to help to recover that foods and to send it to anybody who are in need. So that would be very critical. So I must, first, as, as a policy researcher, I must congratulate you for doing great work. But you are on the first line on the ground. And usually we are just sit in the offices talking with the government officials, and we don't know whether our talk will have any impact, but your work has first direct impact. I, want, I just wanted to thank you for doing, doing the great work here. Thank you.